the mystery here is how did he get to the bottom of that staircase? Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Jack Davis Jr. Viewer discretion is advised. This case occurred at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania in Indiana, Pennsylvania. I did not know that that place existed. 20-year-old Jack Davis Jr. was a business major at that school, and he was a sophomore at the time that this case occurred. He was a member of the Sigma Tau Gamma fraternity. The last time that anyone can recall seeing Jack alive or in any capacity was on the night of October 16th, 1987. Jack was enjoying the college life and there were some, there was like a, a, a little party going on where he had been drinking some alcohol and then he left that party that was on campus and I guess he had kind of did some bar hopping and he went to a few bars that night and just continued to drink. But somewhere along the way, something happened to him and he just seemed to vanish. So he disappeared on the night of Friday, October 16th. And by that following Monday, he's reported missing by his family because nobody can get a hold of him and they find out that nobody has seen him. October 21st, 1987. This is five days after he's last seen. There are some members of the police there at the campus who are actively searching for him. And at approximately 10 o'clock that night, they find him. Where they find him is, it makes you wonder a lot of things. Jack was found at the bottom of a staircase and he was deceased. This was a staircase that was not used often. However, that being said, it's not a hidden staircase either. If he disappeared on the night of October 16th and wasn't found until October 21st, how did not one single person see his body at the bottom of that staircase over the course of five days? But he was taken to the coroner's office. The autopsy results apparently showed very, I guess, small levels of cocaine and marijuana in his system, but he had no alcohol in his blood. When they opened up his chest, they, uh, I guess, found particles or food particles in his lungs. And what the coroner would determine from that is that Jack must have... So the scenario they played out was that Jack must have been walking down or walking along the campus. He was drunk and he needed to use the bathroom. And so he just found this staircase where he managed to walk all the way to the bottom to urinate at the bottom of the staircase like, for whatever reason. And he must have fallen down somehow, thrown up, and then he inhaled his own vomit. And then he choked on it because there were no signs of a struggle on his body or anywhere around the staircase. He did not have any drag marks on him. Mm -hmm. There was no blood found anywhere. His clothing was perfectly intact. Nothing was ripped or damaged. There was, I, I guess, a tiny little like scratch or bruise above one of his eyes. But other than that, there was no bruising. There was no indications that he had gotten into like a fight with someone. There was no injuries anywhere on his body, according to the coroner. And he came to the conclusion that Jack died at about two o'clock in the morning which would have been on the morning of October 17th, 1987. So the, the night he went to the parties into that morning. And 2 a.m. would have been several hours after the last person saw him. When his family was told this, they were like, they were just having a really hard time believing that that's the scenario that happens, that he drunkenly managed to, not only did he walk down a flight of stairs, but there was a landing and then another small flight of stairs. So he managed to walk all the way down the stairs drunk that they're saying. And then he, I guess at the bottom somehow fell, not on the stairs, but at the bottom when he was already down there. It sounded strange, but it's also not completely unbelievable. And so the family reluctantly kind of just went with the story. Not too soon after this, after his funeral had been done, there was a local reporter there who was doing a, doing some stories there on the university that said that the findings of 
Jack Davis's death didn't make sense. The reporter who did the story was questioning the coroner's results, saying, how can this be? And how can he have been there for five days and not one person saw him? It's baffling. So the family got into contact with Cyril Wecht, a very well-known uh, pathologist, forensic pathologist. You've seen him all over shows like Forensic Files, Unsolved Mysteries. He's He was everywhere. I believe he has passed away, but he was definitely one of the best you could possibly get. And so at first, he kind of just looked over the reports. And the first thing he noticed was there was no dispute that the last time that Jack Davis was seen, he was drinking heavily, not only at a fraternity party, but he was also drinking at bars. And there were plenty of witnesses to show he was definitely drinking. And many people can say he was definitely intoxicated. So how on earth, when they took his blood after his death, how was there 0% alcohol in his blood? There was nothing, no alcohol whatsoever. Dr. Wecht would say that a person's blood alcohol level, if at the time of death, whatever it was at the time of death, would be the same level when they are, when an autopsy is done, whether it's a day after they died or 12 days after they died, it's going to be the same level. So how is that possible that his blood alcohol level was zero? And there was very, very small amounts of alcohol found in his uh, stomach contents, like a tiny amount, not enough to even be drunk. The coroner determined in his findings that Jack was dead by two o'clock that morning, the morning he would have vanished. But Dr. Cyril Weck said that's just not possible. He would have been alive for, based on all of the accounts of him drinking a lot of alcohol that night, he would have likely been alive for an additional 30-ish hours or so for that blood alcohol to basically leave and not be present in his blood or urine. Which means, Cyril Weck says, that his time of death was probably somewhere around Sunday night not that very early Saturday morning. The original pathologist said, well, the blood was decomposed, that's why. Uh, I'm gonna believe Dr. Wecht because he is like renowned for this shit. So he, that man knows what he's talking about. Another thing is that according to every witness that was interviewed, Jack Davis had a very clean shaven face the night he was last seen. But when he was found, he ended, he had some, not thick or anything, but he had a lot of stubble on his face. He was absolutely not clean shaven. And your facial hair doesn't grow after you're dead. So that also points to he wasn't killed or didn't die when they said he did. Jack Davis's family, based on Dr. Weck's initial findings, they all agreed to do an exhumation of Jack's body. So they, they exhumed the body. Dr. Weck did a very thorough uh, autopsy and examination. And one thing that stood out to him was that the coroner finding that Jack Davis essentially vomited up something and choked on his own vomit, he said was virtually impossible to have happened. Jack was found on his back with his you know head facing up. There was no indications of like vomit on his face. There was no vomit on the ground underneath him, no vomit on his clothing. Dr. Weck said there was absolutely no food particles or vomit particles found in his terminal air passageways, none of it, which means that he could not have choked on his own vomit. It just couldn't have happened. And so, He's looking at the body and he, what he determines is that the initial coroner never once examined Jack's head or skull. Didn't even look at it. According to the report, he just declared that the vomit, choking on the vomit was the cause of death. And so there was no more need to look at anything else. Well, when Dr. Wacht examined the skull, he found skull fractures. There was several different fracture marks on his skull. One of them was three inches long and it was vertically along the back of his skull. There were no other broken bones. His body had no scratches. His body had no uh, bruises, no indications that 
if you fall down a flight of stairs, because at one point they would try to change the story and say, well, okay, if he didn't die in the vomit, then he fell down the stairs accidentally and that's how he died. Well, there was no bruising or anything. There was, if you're falling down a cement staircase, a long one, you're not just gonna have fractures on your skull. You're gonna have scratches and cuts and stuff all over your body, but none of that was present at all. Dr. Wecht did say that the skull fractures he had were more consistent with a fall than with someone striking him over the head. But he also said it's not impossible for him to have gotten a blow over the back of his head. But there was also no blood evidence in the stairwell, none. What he learned, Dr. Wecht, was that in there were two nights worth. So in the, in the interim of when Jack was last seen and when he was found, there were at least two nights of heavy thunderstorms. If there was blood, potentially, the rain could have very easily washed it away. If the blood had been super dried before it rained, you may still see some indications of it. That could also explain why they didn't have any vomit, you know, on his face or on the ground. It could have been washed away. But you would have probably still seen some indications of vomit somewhere on his clothing or something like that. The other thing is that Jack's clothing was completely dry. He should have Based on when they found him, when the last rainstorm was, there's no way his clothing that would have been soaked would have dried that fast completely because his clothing was 100% dried and there was no water damage or anything to it, indicating that he wasn't in that stairwell when it rained. And the, they confirmed that rain absolutely drenches that stairwell. The other thing that Dr. Wecht looked at is the fact that this staircase is not completely hidden. It's actually, there is a literally classrooms right above with windows that looks directly into that stairwell. It's not a stairwell people went down and used pretty much ever. So that there is a reason, you know, that could be a reason why no one found them. But when they looked in that classroom, they walked into that classroom and just a very casual look through the window, you can see the exact location where the body was found. I mean, you can see it without even trying. You don't even have to like lean or anything. It's just, you could see it. And there were, they determined 200 to 300 students had gone through that classroom over the course of that five days. And you're, and you're saying that not one person, because there were desks next to that window, not one person saw a body in a stairwell knowing a person was missing. Dr. Wecht determined that, well, he believes that the likelihood is that Jack Davis died somewhere else and then was placed in that stairwell. But how he died is the question. Whether it was an accidental death that someone just wanted to cover up for whatever reason, maybe he died during a fraternity thing and they didn't want to get in trouble, and maybe, but maybe it was an accident, or maybe someone deliberately killed him and they just wanted to, they needed to put his body somewhere. Some of these students a couple of years later would actually talk to some of the family members of Jack and they said, as long as you don't tell anyone our names, we'll tell you some information. So according to some of these students, the fraternity that Jack was a part of had several very, what they described as unsavory characters in it that one of the big players in this fraternity was a big time cocaine dealer. There, I mean, there is, a, there is possibilities that somehow Jack may have gotten involved in this somehow in some way, shape or form and gotten killed over it. There was also rumors that they found out that there, were, there was a big, big rivalry between the fraternity that Jack was a part of and another fraternity, like a big serious rivalry. And that's perhaps Jack may have been killed because of that rivalry. Whether that again was accidental or deliberate is really the question. So the coroner's office will end up changing the cause of death from accidental to suspicious. And they would reopen the case, but then detectives looking into it, they really didn't get anywhere with it. And so they closed the case again. One of Jack's family members got a phone call from an unknown man that was basically threatening Jack's family, saying that by trying to reopen the case, you are, that Jack's family now is hurting other people's families, including the person who was calling, this person who was talking to them, saying that you're hurting my family too by trying to reopen this case. They never identified who they were and they didn't really elaborate what they meant. In 2005, a member of Jack's family was contacted by a retired Indiana police officer who told them that two weeks prior to Jack's death, Jack had contacted this particular officer 
for protection. He didn't say why he didn't tell police during the initial investigation into Jack's death all those years prior. He never came forward or never said anything. I, they don't really know why. So was that truthful or not? But why bring it up all of a sudden? But that being said, this case is still considered unsolved. Some people see it as it's a closed case that he died accidentally falling down that staircase. But the evidence does not add up to that. It doesn't. It just it just simply does not. It's a there's just no way he's at the bottom of that staircase and nobody sees him for five days. It just it's just so unbelievable. I guess it's not out of the realm. I guess it's not impossible, right? But it's just so crazy to think that nobody saw him. And the fact that he had skull fractures and no indications that he choked on his own vomit, the fact that he had no rain damage or water on his clothing or anywhere, all the evidence points to the fact that he was placed in that stairwell after he was dead by somebody else. But how that came to be is still a mystery. Did he die in an accident that someone is just trying to cover up because they're afraid? Or did somebody deliberately end his life because of some rivalry, because of drugs, because of something completely unrelated? Nobody knows. And, you know, Dr. Cyril Wecht would say that there are there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students who were kind of who were there at that time. And so many people talk and so many people may have heard things through the grapevine. And so somebody somewhere out there has to know the truth about what happened to Jack Davis Jr. You may have been in a situation way back when where you were connected to a potential killer or the person who may have tried to hide this accidental death and now you're no longer connected to them and now you're free to say what you can say because if you know something you got to tell police. You don't have to say who you are if you call them. You can report it anonymously. All you have to tell them is what you know because Jack Davis and his family, they deserve that. If Jack Davis Jr. was killed or died accidentally and somebody covered it up, somebody needs to pay for that. Somebody needs to be held accountable. Somebody has to know that information and perhaps that someone is you. If you have any information about the death of Jack Davis Jr., please call 724-349-2121 and please help them try to find some kind of closure here and get the correct answers to how this all came to be. If he was murdered or somebody covered up an accident, justice needs to be served. And it's the justice that Jack Davis Jr. and his family rightfully deserve. But that is it for this case. True crime, a Rooney, Dooney, Dingleberry, Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like so more people can see it. Follow me over on my TikTok pages. I have a couple of them. The links to those are in the link tree in the description of this video below. You'll also find a link to my merch store. We ship all over the world if you wanted to check it out. And if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email. My email is listed below. Just send me the name of the case, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to the list. It's a really long list. I pick my cases at random. I can't promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will cover it eventually. But uh, yeah, still in writhing pain, by the way. So anyway, we will uh, see you for the next video. True crime, a Ta-ta for now. Yeah.